Welcome to part 4 of my Ultimate Gambit Strategy Guide, and today I have some driving tips for you. I'm going to be running through this, and on the thumbnail you can actually see at least two of them, so let me know which ones you think those are, and let's go ahead and get right to it. So I'm going to be doing this in the level 316 for second mission target, but these will be super general and applicable to any future FM, pillage, target, etc. that Kickside does release. Of course, I'll still make full detailed videos on all of those when possible. Going ahead and getting started in my first out of five tips is that, well, a little bit of background first. Like I said, this is the fourth video. I'm going to make five total. The next one will be, a, will be a roadmap talking about specials and a bunch of fun stuff like that one. Now, the first tip here out of five is the uh, order in which you should target the enemies, which is roughly the order in the damage they do to you. The worst, most damaging ships in this target here, most damaging things in the target, are the Icebreakers. These do a ton of damage, and you really want to minimize it as much as possible, but this is actually really hard to minimize, which almost makes this into more of an auto-target, but that's a little bit of a different topic for a different video. Second are the Dead Executioners, because you can't actually shoot them down or really mitigate their damage too much. Countermeasures don't work against this at all, although Evade does, so that is pretty helpful. The third one is the D99S rocket turrets right here, because these do pretty massive splash damage to your fleets, you can't countermeasure them, although they don't have quite as much range, so they're not nearly as bad as the dead executioners. The next one here is the regular executioners. These ones you can shoot down usually 5 out of 6 shots and have a 50% chance of evading the last one. They're really not that bad, they will just start to hurt you if they overwhelm your MDS-3s, which actually don't happen uh, very often at all. And of course, the ones you should be able to kill with no damage are the short-range missile turrets right here, as well as the victory mortar type turrets shown right here. Again, that's the short-range missile, missile turrets and the victory mortars. That's the rough order in which you should target things which are shooting at you. If you have a choice, always shoot the thing higher up on the list, or whatever you find gives you the most damage. The th uh, second tip here, which I find to be the most important one, is that you should look for targets, or turrets rather, where you can splash damage out an entire platform with no damage from a few particular turrets to your fleet. Usually that works great on platforms such as the one on the very bottom corner right here, where you can target the one heavy missile and splash out the entire target. But there are a few other use cases in that this dead eye right here will do a ton of damage if it hits me, but the short range or the uh, regular executioner does almost no damage, so it's almost fine or preferred to take damage from the uh, regular dead executioner because you'll take maybe one volley from that compared to taking one volley and getting hit uh, several times from the regular um, from the normal one that you can't countermeasure. So right here, I just took out one turret and I killed most of that second one. Not quite, you know, the best visual out there, but it does show how you can kill almost an entire platform with only leaving the turret. Now, I do have mentioned here that you should try and use a Molotov Maiden's crew for best results, which you can see that I didn't do very well on because I don't actually have it equipped. If I had a Molotov Maiden's, this would have gone down. But this turret does let me use my next tip right here, which is to use the drones. These drones are really finicky, and by the way, if you want to retreat using the drones, it's actually pretty easy to do. You just have to click somewhere and do a bunch of waypoints back and forth until you move around for 10 seconds and your drones don't take any damage. Uh, I wish Kickside would change this around here, and it is annoying to have to do, but that's how it's possible. The drones only spawn if you're stopped. Now, the next tip is that the drones move towards whatever you click on. If I click on or I'm attacking, if that is shift-clicking, regular attacking, whichever one, this turret right here, the drones are going to move to that turret. And you can actually even control them, or you should be able to control them, once they've already spawned, they will actually go towards that secondary object you select, which I do find to be pretty interesting, although they are of pretty limited uh, use here. They're not the best in general for this. And they do have what I believe to be a range of zero, so they're not going to move towards this turret right here, close to it on this side right here. They're going to go around on the other side, and yes, they do get stuck on land, and yes, they're not very useful. Now, you might think that, okay, whatever, I can kind of just ignore the drones, and yes, you can. Um, they are not the best, and they don't help out the most. You can do a few other advanced things, like split them out here to have them uh, spawn in lines, rather, so you have one spawn. If I do this right here and I move all my ships, I have a few that are moving and I stop them in order. The drones, if I start moving again, will actually start spawning four, one, two, three like this. And that can be pretty useful if you want to spread them out to deal with splash damage more effectively. Although you need to spread out your ships a little bit better than I did here. Now, the main use case of the drones and what I want to see 
most people doing, if, it, if at all possible, is to use them to soak fire from the turrets. Now, the turrets work in a really strange way, uh, not too strange specifically, that the they don't actually uh, target the drones if your ships are in range of the turret. So what you have to do is wait just outside of the turret's range right here, and as soon as it fires one shot at your drones wherever they are, you want to move in very quickly as soon as it fires off one volley. So this fired off one volley, one volley went towards the drones, one is going to go towards me, I am going to get hit, but it is only going to be that one. And keep in mind that you should actually try and um, time, time it so it finishes firing that first volley because it can retarget first volley. Let me show you again here on this turret right here. I'm going to go ahead and find the spot where this turret is about to fire its maximum range, which should be right about here, maybe a little bit closer, almost, and just about earlier, a little, 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 little later on. So as soon as this guy fires at the drones that next time, I'm going to charge in and shoot off as many volleys at him as possible. As soon as it finishes firing, I'm going to run in here, get a whole volley towards the drone. I'm going to get one, two, three volleys off, and it's going to be dead before it can really fire its uh, or hit anything on its second shot. So that's the main use case of the drones. Oh well, although you do have to be very careful when you're engaging high splash damage targets, which the FM is one of, in terms of the icebreakers, the D99S turrets, and even the mortars, if you have low countermeasures. I actually only have one gale on my countermeasure ship currently because my shipyard's busy. Um, they can actually get hit, and if you are moving directly after them, the splash damage can hit your ships more than it ordinarily would have. So you may want to, in this case, send your drones off to this Deadeye and just manually get in range of this other one. That way your drones are far away here, and they're going to go off to the left here while your ships will be off on the right. Very safe. You don't have to worry about splash damage. That's just another really important tip on the drones here. If we have enough and enough suggestions and comments of other drone tips, you can go ahead and leave a comment below and I can get back to you on that one. You can also just do things like send them the complete opposite direction if you really are annoyed by them or just stay moving if you don't like them at all. Now moving on to the next tip, tip number four here, is the icebreakers and how to deal with them because like I said, these are the worst ships in the entire target to engage. Keep in mind that these actually have very high splash. I would not be surprised if Kickside did reduce the splash at some point in the future. It really just is so high. It can actually hit you through the mountains, but if you are able to drive decently well, you can get close to the mountains here and can fire off a few volleys at this guy. It does take a long time to kill here, especially with my build, which doesn't have quite complete armor setups, but you can see how I did shoot at the icebreaker here once, and you could, you know, presumably do that a few times. Although, the other tip here is to just stay moving and stay at max range. That's one of the only ways to mitigate the splash damage from these, and to engage them when they are stacked. You can see I sort of killed two of them right here, only maybe took damage from one, or was only in range for the, that same amount of time. You can do this with the bottom icebreaker right here by the, either engaging the moving one when it's heading down, or engaging the top one just after the moving one has left. Those both work fairly well. I actually don't want to get in range of any of this stuff yet, because that gets in the way of my next tip. Oh well. Um, so that's how to go with the icebreakers. You really need to watch out for splash damage, stay moving, stay at max range, and try and hit them when they're stacked and or bounce damage off turrets onto them or on, from them onto turrets. You're going to take damage from these things. These things are tough. And I do hope Kickside tunes it down. The last tip I have for you is that you should know your fleet and know how many volleys it takes of your specific armor setup in terms of the damage percentage, in terms of the upgrade level when those come out, and everything else. You should know how many volleys it takes to take down a turret. So, I'll uh, first just kill this other one to get out of the way, but it's really important for things like these dead eyes because they actually hurt you quite a bit here, and if you can avoid taking one less volley from them, that's great. So if I know it takes three volleys to take down this particular dead eye turret right here, I'm going to get close to it after maybe using the drones for a shot, and fire off three volleys at that one, and it should be completely dead after that third volley, but I'm out of range, it can't do another one, so it's going to be fine. So if you if you mess that up and you only leave a sliver of health left, which would happen with these two right here if they actually couldn't shoot over mountains, is that you're going to take extra damage because you didn't know how much um, health these things had compared to the damage, how many volleys it takes you to kill them. Notice I'm getting hit with mortars here because my drones are, di are distracting the fire. So this turret right here probably takes me two volleys. I'm going to go ahead and just try it. With practice, you would know on every single target how many volleys it takes to take things down, and you'd be able to drive, you know, perfectly is the idea. And you wouldn't want things like that to happen, where just two volleys won't take it down, and you'll be left with having to hit another entire salvo from this guy, and you'll be pretty much dead. 
or at least have extra damage taken, which is not the goal. Now, these have been the five tips I had for you. So I had that first tip again, which was to try and, um, you know, the first tip, which was to prioritize the things that do the most damage to you. I had the second tip, which was to use splash damage to take out entire platforms when possible. This is actually very build dependent in case I did put the important specials for the build I am using in the Forsaken Mission price pool too, which is very nice. So if you need viscosity regulator or narrow fire and aperture, definitely check that out here. The next tip was that you should be using the drones when possible. Have them take a volley from these longer range turrets right before you move in there so one doesn't hit you. It's essentially timing the ship's reload. The next tip, or the uh, most important one rather, was that icebreakers are really, really damaging. You should try and hit them when they're stacked or use the mountains to block their projectiles, which I did demonstrate on these narrow ones right here. But actually, you can usually do the top, top icebreaker on this single mountain or this double mountain here. They just do take a little bit of practice because this thing has a ton of splash and a ton of range and is going to hit your drones. The final tip, which we just went over, was to know your fleet and know how many volleys it takes to take down a particular turret and a particular target, so you can start to time things that way. Now, I'm not going to lie and say that I try and micromanage and always try it perfectly here. These are just quick five tips that I have for you. Go ahead and make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I don't always post all my videos to every single site you might see this on, like TFC or Kixi. Go ahead and subscribe so you see that final video, which goes over the target plan and the sort of release plan or my uh, idea of when and what we should be building. With that said, I want to go ahead and say thank you to everyone whose names appear on screen now. They all support the channel here and keep me around. And as always, this is going to be Derby signing out, helping you be a better pirate.